mean, that's a hell of a stat. You know, it's the same for 50 years as well. Uh, that, that stat is one decade, but it's about a nine percentage point difference. Again, missing on average the two best days of the year. And, you know, the problem is, is that the days with the biggest losses and the biggest gains are clustered close together. So you need to get it exactly right. And so good luck with that. And that's well, that, you must have read your own research because that was my follow up, because you have this you have two charts. You have the one that we showed, which is very TV friendly. And then you have another one that looks like my EKG every time the alarm goes off in the morning at, at 315. And that's your point, is that the, the best days often follow or are just tucked up really neatly to the worst days. So if you get freaky because the market goes down 4% and you move to cash, history says you're probably going to miss the day that makes a lot of your money back. That's right. Exactly. And what can we learn from this? Don't time the market? Well, absolutely. Look you've got to have risk buckets. Our risk bucket is smaller than it was a year ago. We're focusing our risk investments in areas where we have higher confidence. Just give you an example, cybersecurity spending. We think it's going really nowhere but up. Uh, but in the end, these are going to be risky, volatile equities. We've also raised some of the lowest risk assets in portfolios since October and done more recently. Intermediate US Treasury bonds. Well, why would we do that? Um, it's partly the dampen the volatility in other parts of the portfolio. And so the environment is different now. Um, we are not getting help from monetary policy. We're getting anti-stimulus over the coming year. And so the environment is going to be different. Even as we deliver, we think, growth and earnings over the coming year, uh, there's going to be a, a very different type of environment for, for credit where firms, yeah. if we think back a, a year ago, um, essentially, you know, junk bond firms and junk bond stocks led the rally or at least competed with the highest quality firms. You know, now beneath the surface, you have to, again, think about sustainable investing. And I'm not specifically referring to ESG, but really thinking about where returns are generated. They're generated by dividends. They're generated by long-term growth, not just bounce backs uh, from a depressed uh, economy. Is it going to be a, basically then a blue chip stock type year with, with I mean, bonds, investment grade bonds are off to their worst year, start to a year ever? I would look at it this way. You just got to be, be thinking about not necessarily just the very best possible return, but a wider range of possibilities and a more moderate return environment. And quality is probably the better way for you to play it.